So um, uh, a few words about myself. I'm Doron. I'm uh, uh, with uh, Togo Networks. Togo Networks, until recently, was an independent company working together with Huawei. Since the beginning of 2017, we're part of Huawei. We've been acquired by Huawei. Uh, Togo is currently uh, 340 employees in Israel. I'm heading the Wi-Fi and wireless uh, uh, competence center. Uh, and we've, we're doing mostly Wi-Fi, enterprise grade, antennas, software, you name it. Uh, some uh, uh, vertical projects for Wi-Fi, you know, very unique like uh, Wi-Fi coverage for highways, things that, uh, you know, are not customary. Uh, we're also doing the next generation of Wi-Fi. Until recently, this has been 11AX. Now 11AX is turning into a reality. So we're working on the next generation, on the research for the next generation. Uh, and uh, moreover, we're working on 5G waveforms. And this is going to be uh, the topic of our current presentation. OK, so uh, um, I'll start. I like starting with this one. Are you guys familiar with this uh, pyramid? This is the Maslow Pyramid of uh, uh, Human Needs. Actually, uh, um, you see that there are the lower layers, like the most fundamental, most basic needs that we have, like air, shelter, and so on. And once you have the basic needs fulfilled, you can go up to the upper layer. So two reasons for showing you this. The first one is see where creativity and problem solving is. It's in the top layer. This actually means that uh, guys like us doing uh, uh, research or guys like us managing research, we must make sure that our people, our staff, are totally satisfied with all of the lower layers. Otherwise, they will not be creative. Okay? So the, this is the first reason. The second reason is that recently I've spotted the modified Maslow, and this means, first of all, you must have wireless. Okay? So uh, <laughs> probably uh, wireless is the most fundamental uh, need of uh, humans in 2017. And uh, uh, this is actually the topic of our uh, uh, discussion. So uh, waveforms. So, so we're focusing on uh, uh, a new waveform for 5G. Now, uh, waveforms are quite rare. New waveforms today, uh, uh, it's a very rare uh, animal. and. Um, Actually, it's rare because this issue has been, like, you know, iterated times and times again since the 60s and the 70s. So it's very, very difficult to innovate in waveforms. But I think we've got something uh, very interesting. So I'm going to uh, uh, discuss with you a little bit about the new radio waveform in, as a general. And then I'm going to dive into our new concept that is called STORM, the new waveform. And I will try to introduce it in a way that builds up on like prior knowledge. I will start mostly with uh, single care FDMA or DFT spreader with DM, which is the current modulation for LT uplink. And then I'll start tweaking it, modifying, modifying layer by layer until we reach uh, a storm, two flavors of storm. And I'm going to try to convince you that with a very realistic PA models, there is a lot of gain to be achieved with this uh, uh, new waveform. So um, what, one of the fundamental topics in, uh, in 5G new radio in the higher frequencies is PAPR. I think that uh, you're the right audience to uh, firmly understand the grasp that we want waveforms with low PAPR specifically when we're going upper in frequencies. Because the, the higher the frequency, the uh, nonlinearity of the PA becomes a bigger problem. Efficiency becomes a, a bigger problem. Power consumption becomes a bigger problem. So if we can come up with a waveform for a, a 5G new radio that has low PPR specifically for the extreme coverage cases, this would be great. Okay. So think about the, the concept. You have a specific PA. When you're very close to the, to the base station and all you care about is capacity, doing spatial multiplexing, MIMO, okay, you can do it with OFDM. You don't care so much about your PA efficiency. But when you're getting far away from the, from the base station, and when we're talking a millimeter wave, like Helen just started saying, in millimeter wave, far away, when you're doing access, is not that far. For example, 11, 11 AD, 11 AY access points, we're talking about ranges that are measured in meters or tens of meters. So very quickly, we're going to the cell edge and to extreme coverage. And when you're 
at this extreme coverage case, you care a lot about your PA, okay? So, of course, we don't want to reinvent uh, uh, the wheel. Uh, new radio has already made uh, quite a lot of progress in terms of, uh, of waveforms, but this has been mostly like, you know, the, or the orthodox way. You know that, for example, the LTE downlink is OFDMA and uplink is DFT spread uh, uh, OFDM. In 5G, it has already been agreed that until uh, uh, 40, 40 gigahertz, uh, we're going to have both downlink and uplink OFDMA with a specific flavor of DSP, DFT spread OFDM for the uplink. Okay, so of course that, uh, and again, the consideration in keeping DFT spread OFDM for the uplink is specifically due to the PPR, very similar to LTE. So think about going to the next level with, the, with these uh, uh, exact considerations and coming up with a new waveform that is built on OFDMA, built on DFT spread OFDM, like a flavor of these uh, uh, modulation schemes, but can go to the next level and bring another level of coverage due to very low PAPR. So again, we have OFDMA. This is the very, very basic, both for downlink and for the uplink. We have DFT spread OFDM, which is a flavor of OFDM. It's like a different mode, specifically when you're getting far away from the base station, and in the future you will have storm another mode that is based on these two technologies that can bring you to a, a, a lot better coverage. Okay, so, so, so STORM actually, uh, the name STORM stands for a superposition or a synthesis for near constant modulus. We're actually uh, transmitting two single carrier uh, waveforms together, where one of them is designed or specially crafted so that one of them is actually correcting the PAPR of the other. This is why we call it uh, a storm. Both of these guys, they are based on the fundamentals of DFT spread OFDM. I will, I will try to emphasize the very special crafting and tweaking that we are doing for DFT spread OFDM in order to achieve a, a storm. And we're trying to make sure that uh, in most cases, the energy of the, of the second waveform, we call it the auxiliary, the guy who is transmitted just to correct the PPR of the first waveform, is sufficiently low so that it can be just ignored at the receiver to make everything uh, uh, much easier. So again, like in terms of fundamentals, transmitting two single carrier waveforms, specially crafted, tied together, so that one corrects the PPR of the other, so we can get a lot of uh, range extension and more capacity due to very low, due to very low PAPR. Perhaps the most important uh, slide in, in, uh, in this presentation is this one, okay? So I'm going to, uh, uh, and ex I, I, I ask for uh, you to excuse me for the math, it's a bit technical, but I'll try to explain like the behind the scenes each time when I'm presenting a mathematical expression. So, essentially, the, the storm waveform, for example, in the BPSK, in the binary storm case, is built of two single carrier transmission. This would be the primary. This guy is bearing the actual information that I want to transmit to the receiver. So, you see that it's a, pr it's a, a single carrier transmission. This would be like the, the sequence that I'm transmitting. And this is a shifted waveform. So each one of my QAMs or BPSK is now modulating a shifted pulse. This would be a single carrier transmission. This is the auxiliary signal. This guy is correcting the PPR of the primary signal. Now, what's most interesting about it, two things. One of them is that the pulse shape of the primary phi and the pulse shape of the auxiliary phi are different. Okay, we are using different pulse shapes. This is one of the fundamentals, but they are not arbitrary. Phi and phi are defined tightly coupled. W once you have the, the uh, pulse shape of the primary, you can derive the pulse shape of the auxiliary through this equation. So it's not arbitrary. I have a primary pulse shape, I derive the auxiliary pulse shape. And the other thing which is very important is that the sequence for the auxiliary is very easily derived from the sequence of the primary. So you guys who are a bit familiar with PAPR reduction schemes, think about clipping and filtering as an example. 
Clipping and filtering may be uh, uh, one of the most important PPR reduction scheme is very uh, intense in terms of calculation. You need to clip, you need to uh, have some upsampling mechanism, you need to clip, you need to uh, filter, you need to reiterate. So you have a lot of uh, complexity. Here you have almost zero complexity because this is very easily transmitted. This is very easily compu uh, computed. So for applications like user terminal where most of your focus is making sure that the complexity of the transmission is very low, you cannot compare these guys. Of course, a scheme like that, assuming that the performance, and the performance, I can assure you, is much better than clipping and filtering, for example, assuming that performance, we're on the safe side, then computation is most important. And here, this is very, this is like predetermined, this is very easily uh, uh, calculated. So uh, this is one of the big advantages of, of STORM. So to summarize this very important slide, STORM is built of two single carrier transmission uh, done together. The pulse shapes are different, but are derived, the auxiliary is derived from the primary, and also the auxiliary sequence is derived very easily from the primary information sequence, okay? So let's think a little bit about how to build a transceiver, a transmitter that does exactly that, okay? And again, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on 5G new radio. I want to reuse the building blocks of OFDM and DFT spread OFDM. How can I build? This is quite different than OFDM and DFT spread OFDM. I can, how can I build it using uh, uh, DFT spread OFDM, for example? So we had two branches. One is the primary. This would be the guy that transmits the primary single carrier transmission, and we have the auxiliary. You see very easily that the BN, the sequence for the auxiliary, is derived from AN, so this would be the pi over two uh, uh, rotation. And this guy here is something that uh, is a tweak of uh, DFT spread OFDM. OFDM modulator we all know uh, uh, very well, and uh, uh, DFT spread OFDM is actually DFT spreading prior to the OFDM model. I, I will discuss this in a bit more detail uh, uh, in a minute. But before I'm going into the details, I want to show you that actually we have a modulation scheme that is very similar to DFT spread OFDM. In this naive transmission scheme, it's like multiplied by two, it's doubled, but I can show you very quickly that we have uh, uh, a very efficient way to transmit that with just one branch and not uh, uh, two branches. But because we have two different pulse shapes, we need to do something a little bit more like uh, intelligent than plain vanilla DFT spread OFDM. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, uh, a little bit demystify DFT spread OFDM. I'm going to show you why DFT spread OFDM, the uh, already existing flavor in LT has better PAPR than OFDM. And then I'm going to build an additional layer over it. We call it POEC, PAPR optimized single carrier. And then I'm going to go back here so everything will be uh, uh, much more clear for you guys. So let's demystify for a few minutes DFT spread OFDM. Okay, so let's focus for a minute on uh, uh, this transmission scheme. From this point on, we just have a plain vanilla OFDM modulator. That would be take your sequence, undergo some IFFT operation, go through a D2A and then go up for your part, for the RF part, up conversion and uh, uh, up to the antenna. Okay, DFT spread OFDM says, hey, before you're going into your, your inverse FFT, please undergo an additional operation of DFT, and usually the number of uh, uh, points in this DFT would be smaller than the one of the inverse FFT. So let's start with understanding essentially what would be the nature of this concatenation. Why, for example, in LTE, the downlink is transmitted from this point, and in the uplink, transmitted from this point. What am I gaining here? Okay, of course, these, these are smart guys. They've done exhaustive checking of uh, this technology. And what was the reason for doing downlink from here and uplink in LTE from here? So this is like our baseline. So let's try to understand uh, actually what's going on here. So from this point on, I simply have a simple OFDM modulator. So if the input to the inverse FFT is ZK, 
endpoints of this k, I'm just going to have each one of these zk's modulated by a different uh, exponential. Okay, so we know that. This, this would be like our plain vanilla OFDM modulator. In DFT spread OFDM, these guys, zk, are not quams, in contrast to OFDM. These guys are not quams. They would be the DFT output of quams. So if we have AP, these guys are quams, zk is the DFT output of the quam. So we have just a, a regular uh, endpoint DFT uh, discrete operation um, matching APs to ZK. Okay, so we have these guys now fitting our OFDM modulator. So let's just plug it in and see what happens, okay? So again, excuse me for the math, but if, if I'm plugging it in, I'm just playing with summation order, what I see is the actual, actual transmitted signal takes the following form. The actual baseband signal would be AP, our QAMS, modulating phi, this would be a pulse shape, that is shifted by t over m times p. So each one of my quam is now modulating a shifted pulse shape. What did I get? Essentially, what comes out of the antenna is single carrier. No matter how I crafted it, no matter that I use an OFDM modulator, no matter that I use the DFT, essentially, the waveform that comes out of the antenna is single carrier. Okay? But what is the pulse shape? What is the pulse shape actually that I'm using in single carrier FDMA? So when I'm trying to drill down into the pulse shape that I'm using here, I see that the pulse shape that I'm using is the discrete time Fourier transform of M1s. This would be a periodic sync. Okay? DTFT of ones of a window is a periodic sync. So essentially what, what I have, let's see again here, what I have is single carrier modulated with a periodic sync. So, the first quam would modulate the blue guy, the first replica. The second quam would modulate a shifted replica, uh, shifted by T over M. So, within the OFDM symbol duration of T, I have M quams modulating shifted versions of this sync. So, now when we're thinking about it, DFT spread OFDM actually dictated the pulse that we are using dictated the pulse, and this pulse is a periodic sync. Is this a good thing? Is it necessarily a good thing? It's a good start, okay? It's a good start. So when we're looking at that, this would be the uh, PAPR. PAP. This would be the PAPR of OFDM. We see that for QPSK, PAPR is around 12, 13, uh, uh, dB. Uh, actually, when the number of carriers is large and they are independent, we go very quickly to central limit theorem, where the, the, where the waveform is actually uh, uh, complex, a complex Gaussian. So, so 13 dB, 12, 13 dB, these are the numbers that we have for 10 in the minus 4 in regular OFDM. DFT spread OFDM, about 8 dB. That's a great achievement. This is the achievement that led LTE to choose DFT spread OFDM for the uplink and OFDMA for the downlink. Why? The reasoning is very simple. The user terminal is weak. It's, it's weak, it's poor, it doesn't have a lot of computational complexity, it's not connected to the grid, it's connected to the battery, right? So for the transmission of this guy, I want to make sure I'm using very low PAPR. The drawback of single carrier FDMA is that the demodulation is more difficult. I don't care about that. Demodulation is going to be done in the base station side. Base station is strong, okay? The base station is strong. I don't care about it. So I have DFT spread OFDM in the uplink where I care about PAPR but don't care about demodulation. And the downlink is the reverse thing. In the downlink, I don't care so much about PAPR because the base station is strong, very strong PA is connected to the grid and so on, but I do care about demodulation complexity. And OFDM demodulation is very simple. So in the downlink, this guy is winning, and in the uplink, because of DFT spread OFDM, this guy is winning. So this was like the thinking behind the switch from YMAX and Wi-Fi OFDM, OFDMA to DFT spread OFDM in LT uplink. So, but is there room for improvement specifically here? Before we go to like the, you know, uh, the big league of storm, 
is there room for improvement here? So actually I've hinted to you guys that DFT spread OFDM dictated a specific pulse shift. It told you, not explicitly, but implicitly, guy, you are now using a periodic sync as your pulse shift for single carrier transmission. But hey, maybe I don't want to sync. Maybe I can do better. Maybe I can craft this pulse shape to get better PPR and eventually I can transmit with more power. So essentially going back to uh, uh, DFT spread OFDM, look here. The number of QAM symbols that I'm transmitting within the OFDM symbol is identical to the number of subcarriers that I'm occupying. Is this a law of nature? Why not play with it? Why not be more flexible? And again, in DFT spread OFDM, I have a periodic sync. I want to be more flexible. I want to uh, check whether this flexibility can lead to better performance. Okay, so I want to uh, do something that we, I call, we call POSC, PPR optimized single carrier, but actually this has uh, uh, many other names like FDSS, frequency domain spectral shaping and so on. And just to uh, uh, cut to the chase, this technique is currently being discussed in 5G already. Okay, so I'm going to give you like this briefing. It's not irrelevant, it's very relevant to uh, 5G standardization today. So I'm saying this, let's start with a different pulse shape. I wanna be, I wanna be able to generate a more flexible, a generalized pulse shape where I occupy Q tones, not necessarily M tones, Q can be larger than Q. Actually, Q can be also smaller than, than M. Q can be larger than M and, or smaller than M, but essentially different. And also, I want to make sure that my pulse is like a DTFT of some other coefficients, GK. Not necessarily all of them once. Of course, if I'm using Q equal M and GK, all of them equal one for all of my case, I'm going back to the regular periodic sync. But the question is whether I can do better. So the first thing is, if I'm trying to adapt this guy, can I implement it with simple tweaking of a DFT spread OFDM modulator? Okay, so now we're li like doing the reverse uh, uh, process. We're doing the reverse process, I will spare it from you. But essentially, what I'm getting when I'm doing the reverse process is that I can take a regular DFT spread uh, modulator and I can plug between the endpoint DFT and the inverse FFT some very simple, very low complexity uh, uh, variant of filtering, actually multiplying with coefficients GK and psychic extension. So if, let's start simple, if I have Q equals M, I take M points, M QPSKs, undergo a unitary DFT, I get M <coughs> outputs, these M outputs I'm going to put after a multiplication with GK onto my uh, OFDM modulator, then of course I simply multiply my M outputs with GK. Okay, this is easy. But what happens if I have M outputs and I want to put them on Q inputs of the inverse FFT? Actually, this was one question that I gave my students in the last, uh, uh, in my, in the last semester. They didn't like it that much, I can tell you. But the question is this, I have a DFT with M outputs, I have an OFDM uh, uh, modulator with Q inputs, what do I have to do between them? And actually math shows that the block that is missing is a cyclic extension. Meaning, for example, M equals, equals 4, you have 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you simply continue in a cyclic f fashion. 0, 1, 2, again, until you reach Q. So essentially, in terms of complexity, again, zero complexity. Take a regular, these are the green blocks, a regular LTE-like DFT spread OFDM modulator, plug in multiplication with coefficients GK and a psychic extension from M to Q. For example, M can be 12, Q can be 14. So you have additional two uh, uh, carriers. And then you have a flexible DFT spread OFDM modulator. And the question now is whether I can gain from this flexibility. Okay, this is the question. So the answer is yes. This is OFDM I showed you before, about 12, 13 dB in 10 to the minus 4. 
This is DFT spread OFDM with the periodic sync pulse shape that I showed you before. This would be POSC or FDSS with RRC 0.3. Meaning that if I'm crafting the pulse shape correctly, I can significantly reduce PEPR. Okay, OFDM, DFT spread OFDM, LT uplink, and this is something that is now being considered for the 5G new radio. Okay, in terms of complexity at the transmitter, you have nothing. But there's one question that needs to be asked. I took, let's say I have 1,200 subcarriers. Now, Q is 1,200. Originally, DFT spread off the MDM was 1,200. Now I have to use a smaller number for M, meaning that I'm transmitting actually less than 1,200 QPSKs. So how do I make sure that everything is fair, that, for example, I'm considering lower PPR, but I'm fixing the data rate? And fixing the data rate is done using coding. For example, if I'm, I'm using less subcarriers, I can simply increase the code rate so that the total, the total data rate in, in terms of uh, 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 data information bits is kept identical. So if I'm transmitting the same number of bits over the air, but I can throw in, I can put in a lot of more uh, power into my PA and reach uh, much longer distance, this, this would be a fair comparison. This would be a real gain. If I'm sacrificing detection loss or I'm sacrificing the capacity that I'm using, this would not be a fair comparison. And I'm here to show you only fair comparison, okay? So if I'm, I'm using M that is uh, uh, smaller than Q, I would need to uh, take into consideration uh, the higher code rate and the detection load that, the, that is associated with the higher code rate. But take a look at that again. OFDM, this would be YMAX, Wi-Fi, LTE downlink, single carrier FDMA or DFT spread OFDM, these are synonyms. This would be LTE uplink. This is the reason why they chose the additional DFT. This would be FDSS or POSC. This would be probably going to enter the, uh, uh, the new radio uh, 5G for the lower rates. And this is our baseline. So to summarize, to summarize this point, if I'm using this modulator, the green ones, again, these are plain vanilla DFT spread OFDM. I'm adding the blue, which are actually zero complexity. I can play with the pulse shape that I'm using. And essentially, in terms of PPR, I can reduce my PPR. But essentially, I can play. I have the, pl the flexibility to play with the pulse shape. So now we're going back to our storm. So let's look again in, thi in this slide. This slide, as I told you, this is the most important slide of this presentation. So storm actually is a superposition of two single carriers. Each one of them is using a different pulse shape. So what does it mean for us? That essentially I can build each one of these single carrier transmission using a DFP, DFT spread OFDM modulator with the tweak that I just mentioned, with adding the M2Q uh, psychic extension and adding the multiplication with GK. So now this scheme becomes much more clear. This would be the primary part Plain vanilla DFT spread OFDM, but here I have psychic extension and a filter G0 that corresponds to the pulse shape of the primary. On the auxiliary, I would have the other psychic extension and the filter G1 that corresponds to the pulse shape of the auxiliary. So essentially, using the regular building blocks of plain vanilla DFT spread OFDM with some very simple tweaking, I can create storm in case it, it does some good. Of course, I didn't show you until now that there, there is actual benefit to doing what I'm actually uh, 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 proposing here. So this would be like the straightforward or naive transmission. Actually, because, because in, uh, uh, in Storm, we're using the primary and auxiliary in a very special way. When one is real valued, the sequence is real valued, the other is purely imaginary. So the sequences AN and BN are actually totally orthogonal. The fact that uh, uh, these sequences are totally orthogonal means that essentially we can use just a single DFT to generate the whole waveform. This is actually a key point because this means that I don't have to double my 
uh, hardware in order to generate storm when I'm trying to take a, uh, a regular vanilla flavored DFT spread OFDM modulator and twinking it into storm. I can just take the same complexity of, uh, of DFT spread OFDM using the same DFT to generate both the primary and the auxiliary. So maybe it's a little detail, but in terms of implementation, it's a huge detail. Because now the gap between regular DFT spread OFDM, and this is our baseline, we're not trying to replace it, it's going to be there. OFDM is going to be there when I'm close to the base station and I need higher throughputs and I need higher spectral efficiency. DFT spread OFDM is going to be there. So I'm just trying to take what's already there and to tweak it to make it much better specifically when I want to transmit storms. So in terms of implementation, the fact that I can use just one DFT is very crucial. It is very important. This means that the gap is this small. Gap in terms of implementation complexity. I don't need to double anything, okay? So uh, we have like uh, uh, this flavor because of this interesting observation that the sequences A and B and are always orthogonal, I can use the same DFT to, uh, to do uh, uh, the, uh, the switch from time domain to, fre to frequency domain with just one, just one operation. Okay, so until now I, I showed you uh, the binary version of STORM. This would be the QPSK version of STORM. So you see that the expression is very, very similar. A primary, in BPSK it was pi over 2 BPSK, here it would be pi over 4 QPSK, and then auxiliary. So the expression is a bit more complicated, but essentially again zero complexity. If I know the sequence of information bits or QPSK is AN, I can immediately generate the, uh, the sequence for BN. So uh, uh, we have a version for BPSK, this is called BSTORM, and which with, we started, with which we started, and a version uh, for QPSK, very similar, which is called uh, QSTORM, and this is the expression uh, that we have. And of course, I'm sparing to you the derivation of these, of these expressions. Okay, so, so now let's see what all this is uh, uh, essentially good for. Okay, this would be, this would be the, the, imagine, the real part and the imaginary part of the baseband signal that is being transmitted from the modulator. Of course, everything that would be in a very thin ring of uh, same modulus has zero dB PAPR. Okay, so you see that actually most of my points are within this very thin ring in B-Storm. I have a very small number of points inside. Actually, the, the points inside, they, are, they correspond to the psychic prefix between the OFDM uh, uh, signals. So, uh, of course, they are attenuated, but everything is within this circle. This means that none, there is no point in the time domain that exceeds this specific uh, uh, average power. So PAPR here is very, very close to zero dB. This would be B storm. This would be Q storm. You see that we have a, a slightly thicker ring that everything is concentrated uh, uh, into. So also here, PAPR here is very close to zero. Here it's, sli it's slightly uh, higher, but again, it's QPSK, so of course it makes sense that uh, uh, the um, resulting PPR would be a little higher. Now let's take a look at it on the more like, you know, uh, uh, ordinary forms. So this would be uh, uh, the B storm. We have DFT spread OFDM, the numbers that uh, we've showed. We have a POEC with a very specific one plus DF DSS. Uh, it's like a cosine in the frequency domain being here. Take a look at at B storm. B storm has almost zero dB uh, PAPR. Again, no surprise if you looked at it. Yeah, of course. We can already see here that it's almost zero dB, okay? But here it's like more scientific. And this is what we have in, in Q storm. This would be, I'm sparing again the OFDM, much higher. This would be, I cannot see the point, yeah. This would be uh, DFT spread OFDM, the regular one. This would be POSC with root trace cosine 0.3, and this would be Q storm. Take a look at this advantage. 
huge advantage, okay? Huge advantage, advantage with just a little more processing at the transmitter, okay? So we see that we have very good candidates that can significantly reduce the PPR for 5G new radio, and we understand that this could be very, very important in high frequency. Okay. The question that I still need to answer is that, okay, but does this PPR advantage translate into an actual total gain? Okay, because maybe I can reduce PPR, but once I'm going through a, a PA which is sufficiently linearized and my RF requirements in terms of ACLR and mask are not that stringent, maybe I'm not going to get any gain. Okay, so this is the tricky part. It's tricky because currently uh, RAN4 in 5G hasn't decided about the actual requirements for uh, both the spectral mask ACLRs, and uh, neither they decide on the PA model for high frequency. So here we are like in the dark, and one of the things that I, I wanted to do is to present this technology to you guys. You're the RFPA experts, so maybe we can have some discussion. We can bring the waveform expertise you guys can bring the PA and RF expertise. You can maybe educate us about the right models for AM to AM, AM to PM for CMOS, low cost PA, so that we can uh, test our uh, uh, waveform with a more adequate PA. But, but before that, we, we did our best ourselves. So, what we did is actually we took the uh, high frequency RAP PA model that is currently adapted by the 60 gigahertz. 11AD, 11AY. We modified it so that the PSAT would be 23 dBm. That is uh, uh, good for, uh, for LTE. And we use the ACLR and the mass that are uh, required by LTE. So take a look at that. This would be DFT spread OFDM, the blue one. We have the POSC and we have B-Storm. So when I'm taking a look at the, at the total gain, there's a, a very unpleasant surprise. So for DFT spread of them, it's the baseline. There's no gain. The POSC actually gives 5 dB gain. This is total gain. 5 dB total gain over the DFT spread of FDM. Again, this is already being considered for 5G new radio, mostly by, uh, uh, by Sewit and uh, Qualcomm by way forward. So this would be the gain that is predicted for, uh, with, uh, with POSC. This would be the gain that is predicted for B-Storm. It's better, but the gap is still quite small. It's much better than what's being done in LTE, but when I'm comparing it to the best other competitor, which is uh, uh, FDSS or POSC, uh, that is currently already being discussed in 5G new radio, the gap is not very high. Okay, this would be the gap. So maybe, maybe uh, uh, there isn't enough like, incentive to move from this to this. But now let's take a look at QStorm. Okay, this would be QStorm. Uh, this would be the DFT spread OFDM. This would be uh, the POSC with RC.3. And this would be QStorm. So the key point here is that for the binary case, we have a very good candidate, which is POSC with 1 plus D. There is an already existing very good candidate. But for QStorm, this candidate doesn't provide that much gain. We have 15.2 dBm for DFT spread OFDM, 16.8 for POSC, and 23, I'm actually transmitting on PSAT, yeah? And 23 for QStorm. So when I'm taking a look at total gains, taking a look at total gains, the gain, the gain that I have from also considering the detection loss that I have from uh, uh, FDSS or POSC is quite small. But the gain that I have from QStorm for the QPSK uh, case is this big. So now I want you to think about architecture. We already have OFDM. We already have standardized DFT, DFT spread OFDM. We will probably also have POSC or FDSS. This would be this guy for the binary case. I'm finishing in 20 seconds. <laughs> this guy. So the architecture is already there. Now all that is missing 
is to bring this, user, this huge advantage to the QPSK case. And this can be done currently only by Storm. Okay? So to summarize this, to summarize, uh, to summarize this, uh, as I said, uh, waveforms are a very rare animal in our generation. Okay? Because all of this stuff has, has been iterated and reiterated again and again. Uh, the high frequencies for, fi for 5G, I think, is an uh, interesting uh, exception because of their requirements. And uh, building on OFDM and DFT spread OFDM, I think Storm, specific, specifically QStorm, can bring a huge advantage in terms of coverage. Because 6 dB in terms of total gain would translate in doubling the coverage of a high frequency uh, transmitter. Doubling the coverage is four times the area. Okay, so uh, let's try to push this into the 5G. And again, in terms of our communication, if you guys are PA experts or RF experts and you can consult us or educate us or do some partnership with Huawei on the right PA models, we want to test our technology with the most accurate, most relevant, and most updated uh, models. So you have my email. And let's discuss. And guys, you've been a beautiful audience. Thank you very much. <laughs> you want to give, give, you wanna give time for questions? Uh, yeah. Th yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dora. Uh, I'm sure you'll have some questions uh, from that. I'm just so curious. What uh, magnitude would be the secondary signal? Like, primary? So for, uh, for the B-storm, it's minus 17 dB. So uh, imagine BP, it's, it's BPSK. For BPSK, we're operating in very low SNR. So minus 17 dB actually means that I can totally ignore the auxiliary signals in my receiver. This means that the receiver is very, very simple. In Q storms, it's, depending on the actual design, it's usually uh, larger than 5 dB. So it's actually 5. You want to give some uh, like, you know, credit for the auxiliary to your receiver. But we're also, we also have the technology for very low cost receivers for that. Other questions? Just one more. Um, how much are you losing on spectral efficiency? So, very good question. Actually, in the comparisons that I'm giving you, I'm losing nothing. Because when I'm uh, uh, showing these comparison tables, sorry, Helen, but this is a very important sorry, question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so when, when I'm comparing these guys, I'm comparing apples to apples. For example, in DFT spread OFDM, I'm transmitting over 1,200 subcarriers. OK, here I'm transmitting this would be Q, this would be M. I'm reducing the number of uh, QPSKs that I'm using, but I'm increasing the rate of the code, increasing the rate of the code. So the number of information bits that I'm transmitting over there is totally equivalent. So these gains are with identical spectral efficiency. Good question. Good question. Other good questions? OK, medium questions? <laughs> OK, now low end questions? A really stupid one. <laughs> Since the spectral efficiency is the same as MSK, what's the main advantage? Because with MSK, you can also try for the uh, actually, uh, uh, spectral efficiency is much better than MSK. So uh, we've made the comparison with MSK naturally in the beginning. We beat the hell out of MSK. Okay. Other questions? Thank you very much, guys. I'm sure